First, I just want to say thanks to Dave and uh, his family and staff for asking me to be here. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, I do a great job every year, um, especially since I'm local. I'm really appreciative of it. Uh, but anyway, I want to give you a little bit of information about uh, Retro Tech. This is a company I started almost four years ago now. And uh, we originally started uh, working on gaming consoles and repairs and modifications. And then eventually, in 2016, I really started to dive heavily into CRT repairs and restoration. Uh, last year, in June, I founded a YouTube channel, which is pretty much all about CRT restoration and repairs. And then since then, we've been able to restore over 200 uh, CRTs to date. So that's just a little bit about um, RetroTech. And I do actually have a mission statement for this company, and it's resurrecting vintage technologies for the modern world. So uh, that's just a little bit about RetroTech and the company. and. Today, uh, we're going to go through this presentation, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of highlight here. We're going to talk about a little bit about the history of CRTs. Uh, we'll get into different types of CRTs, and of course, current uses, benefits, uh, why you want to use a CRT, what's good, and also a little bit about what's bad about them. And then, we'll look at what to look for when we're trying to hunt for a CRT, um, some of the reasons that CRT re restoration is important, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end if anybody has any questions. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of brief history lesson on the history of the cathode ray tube. So believe it or not, cathode rays were actually discovered in the 1850s. So this technology goes back an extremely long time. And um, the gentleman in the middle of the picture is Julius Plücker and then Johann Wilhelm Hittroff. These two scientists uh, basically started the whole study of the cathode ray. Uh, they discovered it and then they shot it into vacuum tubes and watched it project shadows against the tube. And that was officially the first kind of CRT uh, tube technology starting. And then, you know, 40 years later, you've got Arthur Schuster. He uses an electric field of current to create deflection, which just means it's using electrical currents to move the beam that's being protruded through the tube and to give you a nice geometrical shape eventually on the end of the tube. In 1897, another gentleman started using magnetic fields, which is actually what is used now in uh, tubes. And then in the same year, J.J. Yeah, Thompson uh, proves that cathode rays are made of subatomic, subatomic particles known as electrons. So the electron and the shape of the atom was actually discovered through the cathode ray tube in the late 1800s. Uh, this is officially the first CRT that was ever made, and it was, again, 1897, so a lot happened around this year. This is a different gentleman named Frederick Ferdinand Braun. It's called the Braun tube. Uh, it was a cold tube, meaning there wasn't any electrical current actually powering it. You just send your beam of a current through here, and he would watch the beam of current go through the tube, and it was more of an electro, uh, or a, I'm sorry, an oscilloscope. So just reading uh, what the rays were doing and what the different currents were doing. Fast forward a little bit further, and uh, we've got John Johnson and then Harry Weinhardt from Western Electric. They developed the actual first hot cathode ray tube, which just means electrically heated and powered, and then it is sold as a commercial product later that year. So this was not used for like televisions or anything at this point. This would have been more used for like Morse code technology back in uh, early war. All right, so this is the major time then of technological advancement towards a picture screen. And this gentleman, I'm not gonna pretend to know how to say his name from Japan. He, uh, in 1925, he had developed his own CRT with 40 lines of picture resolution. Two years later, he's over double that to 100. And then in 1928, he's the first person to ever display a human face on a CRT screen. Uh, in 1932, at the same time, right after all this, RCA is granted trademarks for the terms cathode ray tube. And they did, at that time, begin making and developing a test unit. Uh, in 1950, RCA released that term back to everybody else that they could use it uh, for their uh, term. But 
This is a picture of the very first RCA trial set. Uh, it looks a lot like a record player or a piece of giant furniture. And this was actually kind of a weird setup because you can see the round picture face and the way it worked is that picture would reflect off a mirror on that fold up piece of furniture and you sit there in front of it and watch it off the mirror. Uh, not very effective and they actually weren't even able to get this sold yet the first couple or the first year because uh, the actual first commercial commercially made CRT television was produced by Telefunken in, in Germany in 1934. This would have been an all black and white set originally. And here's some pictures of those original CRTs. Uh, you know, these are huge, giant pieces of furniture uh, that just had a nice little screen in them somewhere. And a lot of wooden knobs. This was the style of TV back in the early 1930s and mid-1930s. And then we're going to move through some of the early years of CRT television. Uh, 1935 to 54 is pretty much dominated by black and white. RCA continued to hold a major stock and share of the actual market. Uh, they made over half the CRTs at this time. So back in the early or late 40s and early 50s, RCA uh, really began to try to develop a color TV. And the way they were doing that is through what's called shadow mask technology. And I'm not going to get too different, you know, into all the details of this one about exactly what, you know, overly doing with a shadow mask. But I do have some examples of a little bit about how that works. Um, this first tube will go in that that's not on, that's just the wood grain, is a shadow mask tube. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of difference between that and other tubes in a minute. But 1956 to 58, the first few television shows were broadcast in a color format that was acceptable and usable by these RCA screens. And then right after that, in the early 60s, color TVs just took off. And um, this was, again, this one right here is the very first color television that was ever made by RCA and pretty much anybody that was sold. You can notice it had, it had a real roundish picture to it, so uh, that was really popular down in the early 50s. A lot of wood. Um, again, now we're moving into the 60s where they're starting to get a little bit more of a 4x3 format and more almost straight sides and a little bit bigger picture too. And it's still a lot of wood, but Mostly shadow mask technology all during this time. RCA is dominating the television market. So here's a little diagram of how a shadow mask actually works. You've got your three electron guns, and that's what's giving you each, each of colors, red, green, and blue. That beam of light is shot through what's called the shadow mask you see on the diagram. And then that mask is a way to line up the dots in a pattern on the screen, and that's how you're getting your picture. It's just filtered through that and aimed at the screen to make the uh, pictures on the screen. And the original color beams were in that triangular pattern, and that's pretty important because it wasn't really an effective way to make a color picture. And uh, the alignment was changed later to straight three by or three in a row. I'll show you that here at the top. That's an actual electron gun from a CRT mask or a uh, shadow mask tube. It's got, they moved it to three in a row. They did that later to really increase the brightness on the uh, shadow mask tubes. And again, this whole area where this gun is, is in this area right here in the back of the tube. If you're not familiar with it, that's inside that, that uh, glass vacuum right there. All right, so again, shadow mask tubes, they were produced for the entire lifespan of the CRT display. And you can tell them by, I put this picture up, they're actually curved on each side. So it's curved top to bottom, and then left to right, or right to left. It's curved on all sides. That's always going to be the situation for most you know, shadow mask tubes. So after, um, after a little bit of time, Sony is really getting interested in getting into the game of television. And this is actually their very first television that they developed. It was a portable 8-inch, black and white only screen, and it wasn't projection type, so it was a, a transistor television. However, it was not, it was due to, it was breakdown a lot, and two years later it was discontinued, it wasn't really a good seller. 
but it was their first television. I've got some higher definition photos of that. Again, it looks more like, I don't know, a spotlight or something, but it was an actual, actual first television. So Sony really wanted to get into the color TV market. And in 1961, they started by going to an IEE trade show in New York, and the executives were just walking around and they actually stumbled across a booth for a company called Autometric. And it was just a small a company that had designed uh, what they call a chromatron color tube. It used a single electron gun where the three guns were replaced by one. And then it shot just one beam that was shot into a vertical grill instead of that shadow mask. And then that was used again to separate the colors out through a little bit different method. But Sony was really, um, really interested in this technology and just having the one single beam shot. So they started developing the, what they did is they saw that and they immediately went into uh, developing their own version of this chromatron. And they worked with Paramount Pictures during the time. In 1964, they did reveal the first chromatron color TV set uh, later in the year, but it was produced the same year. And literally to be competitive, Sony sold it at half their cost. So they were losing tons of money, but they were, they're confident, or they were confident at the time that they could get production costs down and try to make up money on the back end. Here's a picture of that early Chromatron, very first color TV Sony made. And uh, again, this is not a Trinitron, this is officially still a Chromatron, but that's what it looks like. So the Chromatron nearly broke Sony. By 1966, they were not able to reduce the cost because the Chromatron technology was not easy to replicate. So uh, more competitors began to jump into the television market. They were all making shadow mass TVs. That technology costs were going down. Uh, Toshiba and Panasonic both jumped into the market or into the game and they had to buy the RCA license who owned the license for shadow mass. So they started making it. So with more competition and Sony not being able to uh, you know balance those costs, they uh, continued at a financial loss until 1966, and then Sony executives, uh, they didn't want to give up on the search for a good color TV, so they kept 30 engineers on staff to just work uh, non-stop on a new tube. So it didn't take them very long, though, because they used a lot of the same things that they had from the Chromatron, and they pretty much completely redesigned it, and the Electron gun was able still to do the thing where it wanted a single beam. 